All right, What's everybody. Up? We got Jay Kinder here today. Jay, you on there? There you go. There you are. Um, and uh, Brent is traveling right now. And so, uh, Jay, where is he, Jay? I, I don't even know. He's <laughs> like trying, trying to figure out where's Waldo. He, he's he, he. I don't know if he that's him and he hopped on here or not, but. I know he was on a, you know, he called me earlier today. He was in London. I think he had another 10 hour flight on top of that. So sounds like he's going to Australia maybe or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jake, okay. thank, you, thank you for coming on today and just let us have it blow our minds. You can, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do, I'll do my best. So it's That's always great. Man. You know, how's everybody doing? How you doing, girl? I hope we catch you off. I, I'm so glad to see you. This is great. Hey, appreciate it. It was a good Facebook Live, by the way. Oh, thanks. You got me pumped. Yeah, so, you know, anytime that, you know, um, Brent asked me to jump on with you one percenters, it's always it's always a privilege to to be able to jump on and share. So I'll, I'll kind of start with, uh, you know, we were discussing this. Actually, you probably heard, Carol. We were discussing um, in, in one of our Facebook Lives, one of our groups uh, today, you know, the, you know, when I, when I think about what's working and who's having the most success, you know, it always goes back to the principles. Um, and, and the thing that I see working the best right now, um, obviously, you know, anything you want to be successful at should be measured. Right. And, um, you know, when I think back to when I first joined the company, you know, Brent had me watch the Rob Flick video, um, which if you haven't watched the original uh, Rob Flick video, I will highly recommend go back and watch it. But like most entrepreneurs, um, I didn't quite listen to Rob and Brent. I had to go out and and uh, do all my learning for myself and figure out, you know, what is, you know, what is network marketing? How does it work? How does it relate to what we're doing here at EXP in terms of the conversations and read and became actually really good friends with Brian Carruthers um, in his book, uh, Building an Empire. Again, a book that if you haven't read is literally, you know, the Bible for how we've really built this organization um, at EXP. The principles there align perfectly with with how we have conversations with agents and and um, help agents be successful. And so, you know, the, fir the first thing that I would say is if you're not measuring something that you're doing daily, you're probably not getting the results you want. And it starts with, the leading indicator, right? So if you're leading indicators, lagging indicators, what's the leading indicator um, uh, of, of what is actually going to get you results in terms of recruits? And what's up, Drew? Um, and, and, and if you're not measuring conversations, how many conversations are you having? And more importantly, it's not just about conversations. And we'll turn this over to some Q&A and you guys can ask questions or whatnot if, if you want to here in a little bit. But it, it starts with how many conversations you have, you have, it, you know, and when I, when I go back, I had somebody today ask me, um, ask me the question, if you could go back and do it again, you know, what would you do differently? And um, the first thing I said, and actually I sat on a panel uh, probably three or four years ago with uh, four or five of the top builders in DXP, and the answer was the same for all of us. Uh, we would all, all, the one thing that we would go back and change is we would go back and we would make our list and we would have made a better list. And so, you know, it starts the easy, you know, the easiest thing, um, easiest person to recruit is somebody that you already know. Um, that's the easiest. Now, most of us have burned through all, a lot of those people and, and haven't, um, you know, we either got them or we didn't get them. But that's the one thing that every large builder would say. I, I, I say this, that's what everybody said when I was on that panel. And I agree with it. And um, I agree with this still to this day. There's a number of people that I could have reached out to that for whatever reason, I just didn't, I didn't reach out to them. And, um, you know, probably my assumption was, man, they're already doing this or they're already doing that, or they're not going to be interested or for whatever reason. And, you know, you just never know where somebody's at and, um, and what, you know, what they might be interested in doing. And obviously the longer people are in this business of selling real estate, if you guys know my story, you know, selling 500 plus homes a year was the most miserable year of my life. Um, and you, know, you you might assume that they're happy, assume that everything's going great, but they might be ready for something different. And so making that list obviously is is something that I think, you know, going back to having that pinned up on the wall, looking at it every day, making sure you're using the wealth chart. All of these are like, they're little things that like are so simple but either you're doing them or you're not doing them, right? It's like, it's the curse of knowledge. You know what you should be doing, but are you doing it? 
Um, so I, I often repeat myself a lot and that, and that's a good thing. I think when it comes to the Asian attraction and the process and the system, it's not complicated it's not about trying to make it more complicated. It's about following a simple process that everyone can follow. And if you guys want to be one, that one percenter that you want to be, or you wouldn't be joining this call. Um, one of the things that I think is, is super important is measuring the measuring your conversations per day. And, and in every conversation, you're making an offer. What is that offer? You're offering an invite to a live event, an invite to watch a presentation, an invite to watch a video. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, building relationships is a, is a big part of that if these are people that you don't know. But that first leading indicator that's going to be a leading indicator of success is are you inviting people to take a look at the opportunity? Um, the thing that... that um, often comes up. I had a call today, this morning, uh, with one of my biggest builders, over a thousand people in his organization. And this is this is my measurement of success. And I want you to think about your organization in the same way. There's how many ever people you've got in your organization? 10, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, doesn't matter. How many three-way calls are you doing a day? For me, that's my biggest measure of success. I feel like when, when I've got people following the process, I know because there, there's people in my calendar, I'm having conversations daily, and I'm helping move the needle for, for my organization. To At the end of the day, like in my, the, the, the days where I feel like I've had the most impact that I can have on growing my organization, it's how many three-way calls did I do? And so if either you're teaching your people to do three-way calls, and you're going to repeat, be repeating yourself over and over and over again, saying the same things over and over and over, um, or people are coming to you like, hey, man, I really want to do this agent attraction thing. You know, what should I do? And you're like, go to the training, what, read the book, read, uh, you know, building an empire. You know, if you guys haven't you know, gone through the training um, that we've done, it's, you know, you can watch just about any presentation I've ever done uh, on Brent st and, and James's stage um, at Build. Um, it, it's been the same presentation five years in a row that I've done, and it's, it never changes. It is the process, right? So so, you know, go back to following the process. I know when, whenever I was um, um, going on four to five listing appointments a day, the, the benefit of repetition and getting to do things over and over and over again is you get to go back to the process and look, did I follow the process or did I not follow the process? And so what I find is when people get, you know, when people would get in my calendar, like my first year at EXP, I did 999 calls on schedule once. I might've done more than that. I don't know if that's like the limit, but that's what was in there at the end of the year was 999 three-way calls. I'm sure I did more than that, but that's what was calendared and scheduled that I was, you know, that I had done. And most of those calls were three-way calls. A lot of those calls were people just getting in saying, hey, I really want to do this. What should I do next? And so half my day would be spent having three-way calls with people following the process, the other half of my day was telling people, go watch the training and follow the process. Like the things I would say over and over and over again, it's all built into the training. So you can go to uh, agentattractiontraining.com. Michael Reese built that site, redid all the training, and it's as good as anything I've ever seen. You can watch it there. You can see a shortened down version of that, um, that presentation that I do at Build. It's on Brent's uh, YouTube channel. I think it's on my channel too somewhere. Um, probably on brentgoresources.com. Um, and that's, that is the process. So first and foremost, you know, it's about your number of conversations, making an offer and, and, and making invitations. That's the leading indicator of success for your organization. The leading indicator of success, are you teaching your people the process? Are you teaching people to invite and are, are they out there doing that? Are they putting people in your calendar? That is the absolute measurement of success. It has been for me for the whole six years I've been here. It's how many conversations I'm having. I can literally tell the heartbeat of my organization growing by the number of conversations I'm having in, in those three-way calls. And again, like I said, at the end of the day, um, that's that's the those are the measurements of success. Those are the key, the key elements, the core of the philosophy of what we're doing. We're trying to help agents. We're inviting them to an opportunity. Is this a better way? But I had a call this morning uh, that Andre put me on. And uh, this is a common, a common thing that we get. And, and we, we kind of talked a little bit about this this morning in my group. And uh, she said, if there was only the only way I would ever join, this is how the conversation started. And I did a three-way call with this lady with Andre um, today. She started the conversation with, if it was the last brokerage, the only way I would join EXP is if it was the last brokerage and, and there was only one broker in town and it's the only company that I could join to sell real estate. That was what she said. That was how the conversation started. 
Now, that would be pretty easy to assume that that's a not going to get um, not going to get this one. Right. Um, but what Andre did was was really smart. He ignored that as he neutralized that statement. Hey, I can understand how you might feel that way. You know, you know, tell me what happened. Well, I did two real estate transactions with two EXP agents and they both sucked. All they cared about was recruiting me. They didn't even care about the transaction. So, you know, first and foremost, if you're out there selling real estate, do a good job. Treat the agents with respect. Make sure you're doing, doing deals, you know, doing deals the right way and make sure you make them a raving fan of how you do business. Otherwise, they're not going to be interested in ever coming to EXP anyways. So so that's, that's a kind of a no brainer statement. But but what Andre did that was awesome in that call was he neutralized that statement. He said, hey, I can understand how you might feel that way. There's a bunch of agents at EXP I don't like working with. And there's agents like that at every company. It wasn't a real objection to EXP. She had no idea what EXP was. And this particular agent um, had a goal that Andre had found out by asking questions. She did 30 deals this year. She wants to get to 60 deals. And this is where this is where Andre followed the process to the T, like he always does. He's amazing at doing this. Maybe one of the best that in my organization of anybody I know following the process, actually having calls every single day, not afraid to, to, to make those calls, not afraid to get the nose. He's just looking for the people that are looking for help. And um, and so he, he you know he neutralized that, you know, that objection where people think they know what EXP is, they certainly don't. Um, understand all of EXP from the outside looking in. They never do. They think they do, but they never do. And so don't don't let those objections throw you off. Sure. There's, you know, this it's just like when somebody used to say, you know, I, you know, I used to call FISBOs, right? And um and expireds. And boy, you get a lot of rejection. If you like rejection, call FISBOs and expireds. It's great for rejection. And so you know, people would say, well, I don't like working with real estate agents. And my script was, it's funny you say that. I don't like working with most real estate agents either. Right. It's just a neutralizing statement. It's not a real objection. They're trying to get something done. They're trying to get their home sold, put the most money in their pocket. They don't realize that that they're at a disadvantage by not having it marketed to the masses of real estate agents in the marketplace that have all the buyers that they're working with. They're just trying to save money. Right. And so, you know, don't let a people's objections keep you from still trying to understand what their goals are. And Andre did that. And he set up a three way call. He said, hey, I know a guy. Guy used to sell a bunch of real estate, one of the top guys in the industry. He's done wonders for me. He's helped me get to a place where I was able to step out of production in my business. And I'd love for you to meet him if I could schedule, if I could set up a call, would you be open to jumping on? So she said, yes, he gets her on the call. She, I, I basically go through the process of, of you know, the three-way call, how I, uh, um, he, he edifies me, you know, which I always hate, by the way, it's never comfortable when someone's edifying you right in front of you. It just feels weird. It always will. But you know, you did a good job of edifying me like he always does. And then I just genuinely asked questions about her business, what she was trying to accomplish. And I also understood because because Andre gave me the details ahead of time in a text. She's doing 30 deals, wants to get to 60. She's at a transaction fee brokerage at 550 uh, per transaction, which means she paid a little over 16,000 in transaction fees. She thinks she's at 100 percent until somebody helps her do the math. Right. So, you know, agents think that, hey, well, if you did 60 deals, so this is another little another little um, thing to make sure that you're you're thinking this way. So when she says she wants to do 60 deals, to me, that means she's paying $33,000 to her company next year. So I'm going to assume that she's going to hit her goals. I don't use 30 as the basis for the conversation. I use the goal of 60. I said, if you get 60 deals, you're going to pay an additional 16,000 into your brokerage. You're already going to save 16,000 by coming over to, to EXP. Does everybody see the difference in that? I'm using the number that's the goal, even if they haven't hit the goal, but they want to hit that goal. If you're able to do that where you're at, that's great, but it's going to cost you 16000 more if you stay where you're at. The other thing is we got into her business and where her business was coming from, and, and we discussed all of those things, you know, what she was doing and this and that and the other. And I said, well, what do you, what do you, what do you think is going to help you get to, you know, to, to 60. She said, well, I don't know. I've got Boomtown. Da, 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 da. I said, Boomtown. Okay. Boomtown is a great tool. I said, how many deals have you closed from it? She said, I've probably closed two and maybe have a couple more in it. I said, I don't usually tell agents to cancel, you know, a tool that they're using if they like the tool and they're, and they're still you know open to pay for it. But at eXp, you're going to get provided a KB core. You could also use Chime. They're basically the same type of tool that you currently are using, but it's provided to you. So that's another $7,000 that you're going to save um, by moving over to EXP. And so then I broke down, here's how I would help you with growing your business. 
And I explained to her how we help with KV Core, the trainings that we do. We do uh, lead generation trainings. We call it Funnel Fridays, where we show people what ads that we're running and show them how how we're gonna, you know, how we are actually helping agents grow their business. And and we do that every single Friday. You can jump on. We're gonna show you how to run the ads. We're gonna show you how to use the tool. We're gonna show you how to how to make this work for you and generate leads at a much lower cost. And asking her how much her cost per lead was, she wasn't really sure because it's all bundled into your platform cost and your your budget for lead gen, right? So the cost per lead is a lot higher for somebody that's paying six or seven hundred dollars for a platform. Um, so she made, let's say she's spending, you know, seven hundred, I think it was six or seven hundred dollars a month for Boomtown. Plus, you know, she's probably got another three hundred in budget. So she's maybe spending a thousand bucks somewhere in that range. But if you divide that by the number of leads she's getting, it's the cost per lead is astronomical. It's like 40 bucks a lead. Okay. So at, when you come over to EXP, if at, at, if I can help you to generate leads, which what we're doing is generating leads at three bucks to five bucks a lead, the number of leads is going to increase, which is just going to give you more opportunities. And you're going to get to those deals a lot faster over time. And so just going through all that, I just tried to help her with the strategy for what she wanted. It was never, never was a conversation about EXP. And then I asked her, you know, so what do you like about what you've seen about EXP so far? She's like, well, I like, you know, that I have access to, you know, people that can actually help me. And she's going through the things that she likes about EXP. She's, that she's seen, she's done a little bit of research at this point. And I said, it sounds like you probably understood the math already. So I love it when people tell me they do their own research on their own and they've actually been, you know, doing the math on their own and creating spreadsheets. That means they're going to get it right. They're going to understand the math a lot quicker. And so at, at the end of that conversation, I jumped off and said, hey, listen, look at it as, you know, as a partnership. We're here to help you. That's the beauty of this model and all of those things. So she's got the stock benefit. I went over all those things and said, it sounds like this would be kind of a no brainer if, you know, if you're looking to get to, you know, 60 transactions a year, you want to build some stock and have an exit strategy. Um, you also have the way, a way to earn additional um, you know, passive income, which she didn't, she didn't really express interest in that. So I didn't really talk about it. So um, if she had said that was something she was super interested in, I would have gone deeper on that. But that wasn't her main focus. Her focus is trying to go from 30 to 60. Now, once she gets to 60 transactions, I'm definitely going to help her to under, you know, she's going to, I had an agent one, uh, one time that joined, was doing about 40 transactions, wanted to get to 100. And then, then her goal, her ultimate goal is to do 300 deals a year. I told her, I said, I'm going to be maliciously obedient and I'm going to help you get to the 300 deals a year. That malicious obedience just means this is what you want and I'm going to help you, but it's not what you really want. Okay. This is a way better thing over here, but when you're ready, I'll show you how we can help you do that. Right. And so um, she did, she got all the way to 300 something transactions. And she said, Jay, I wish I would have listened to you when I first joined, I should have focused more on agent attraction because this is way harder than, than the money, the little bit of money she was getting from agent attraction just by accident, you know, not even really trying to focus on it. So, so again, I focused on what her interest was. I jumped off the call and um, Andre at the end of, he stayed on, answered some more of her logistical questions about EXP that I didn't need to be um, a part of, a part of on the call. And um, he texted me afterwards and actually it's not true. I jumped back on the same Zoom that was Andre's Zoom after I had another call and he was still on the Zoom from, with her at the same time. So he, he ran long on, on his, his call with her and then I had another Zoom with him. And so he had two calls with me today. And that that is just a testament. I know that, that Andre's organization is growing. He's leveraging um, the through a call process. He's doing those through a calls with his team all day long. He's doing the thing that moves the needle to grow an organization. And so and I and I've always been able to see, you know, in my calendar, I can look this week who's in my calendar. All right. That's the person that's following the process. That's the person that's going to be growing the most. That person's organization is going to be the one that's growing when others aren't. And it's just based on those simple processes and following the system. So I just want to beat on that. And I think a shift in, and maybe, maybe you need to hear this, maybe you don't, but hopefully some of you do. So make sure that if that part of your focus, it's not just about what you do. It's way more leverage when you can get 10 people in your organization scheduling three-way calls. And, and that's where your organization really grows is when you're, you're, they're jumping on, they're hearing how you do three-way calls. As their organization grows, they're going to be able to take those on and do those for their team when it doesn't need to be you. Generally speaking, I'm not needed. Andre never puts me on a call with somebody that's a brand new agent. He doesn't need me for that. He can do that. He can he can leverage, you know, he can handle those, those calls with new agents. 
But if it's somebody that he feels like, hey, it would be better than me trying to continue to sell them. Let me leverage someone else, sell them, and then let them try to, you know, put the pieces together without it feeling like a recruiting call. And so, you know, these calls don't feel like recruiting calls. We're just genu genuinely trying to connect the dots, help them understand the math, and get to a place where they're comfortable um, making a decision. And if all goes well, at the end of that call, they say, well, tell me what the next steps are. And that happened to me yesterday, once in a live meeting and once uh, with Andre, with this person, what, what's the next steps? That means we connected all the dots properly. So, um, so yeah, that's, that is that um, is um, something I would really focus on, not just the leading indicators for your personally recruiting. If you really want to see your organization grow, it's about leading others, getting other people to this call. Get, you know, what are you doing to get your organization focused and consistently doing something daily around age and attraction? Who's running with you? Who That's what you're looking for. You know, help the people that are, you know, the people that are swimming. You know, you know I'm looking for the people that are looking for me. So, um, so yeah, so I'd love to um, maybe open it up. And if you guys want to ask any questions, that's kind of where my thoughts are today and what I'm seeing work and, and you know, you know, people's organizations that are growing. The same principles have been the same for six years. Nothing has changed. It's it's consistency. It's doing something daily. You know, you don't just get on the scale once and, and expect to lose weight. You don't just go to the gym once and expect to lose weight. It's something you do daily. If you want to change your life, change something you do daily. But get your organization doing the same thing. Identify those people that say they want to do this and make sure that you're getting them to, to you know, have a daily call with them, have a weekly call with them. But get a, get a group of people together and help them to follow the process, follow the process, follow the process. And that's um, that's what has, from the very beginning of me being at EXP to still today, been the, the one thing that I can tell is the difference maker is that following that process and the people that are uh, having conversations daily, three-way calls, and that's how we've seen uh, the best, you know, the best growth in all of our organizations. And what will happen eventually is, you know, it got to a point where, you know, Andre wasn't leveraging me quite as much. He was so busy doing three-way calls for his organization. You know, he didn't need me. He was he was teaching them to do the same thing. So he was doing the three-way calls. So that's and that you'll start seeing what happens is names will start popping up in your in your EXP in the back end that you I didn't talk to that person who, you know, who, who sponsored them. Right. That that's that's the real leverage in this. And sometimes we get caught up in our personal recruiting and personally recruiting where the real leverage is getting, you know, getting a handful of people to be doing what you're doing at the same pace. That's the three X, four X, 10 X multiplier opportunity. So um, just wanted to mention that because I think sometimes we get caught up in what do we got to do to have more conversations, but we don't think about how we're helping our team grow. And, and that is really the, the real level where the real leverage is at. So happy to ask or answer, answer any questions. Hope that was valuable. Hopefully somebody, somebody needed to hear that today. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Super helpful. Jay, I got my hand up. Uh, so. yeah, man. yeah. Anyway, good to see you, my man. Um, always bringing the fire. Appreciate it. Uh, Andre and I have been doing calls daily for gosh, I don't know, year and a half, two years, something like that now. Nice. And, uh, and I think you probably know we're, uh, coaches as part of a track boss, which is really yeah. that daily cadence of, um, you know, doing the calls every day. And then I love the aspect of leverage because it's one thing to do your own calls daily. You got to discipline yourself and be, you know, accountable to do it every day yourself. But then it's the aspect of, leading from the front and inspiring others to do the same. And that's where you really get that leverage point and things really taken off. Right. Right. So I really appreciate you Love that. Uh, bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, 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 uh, it's fun to watch and try to dissect. Okay. You know, what are the principles behind this? Why is this working? And, and you, you can see it when it's in action and Andre's living it. You guys are living it a track boss. Y'all are, y'all are making a difference. It's not easy work, but it's, it's better money, right? You know, you can go sell another house, you know, this year. That's great, but it only pays you once. So this is yep. something that can pay you for dividends for life. So it's definitely should be a part of the mix of any agent that's in the company, in my opinion. Love it. Cool, man. Thank you, Matthew. All right, Steve, uh, I'll just go down the list. I think, I don't know, they put these in order or whatever, but Steve, Steve Hiller? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, quick doing, question. I know the answer to this, but I think if you could outline for the group just the cadence of a three-way call. Right. So, uh, so it start it starts with um, well, and and really, there's a you know, there's the 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 pre-appointment setup, right, um, of making the connection on what they're trying to do, and hey, I think I have somebody that can help you. The edification piece, um, and then when we get on the call, they you know you know he tells me a little bit about them, edifies them. Then he edifies me. 
and then lets me take over the call from there. Doesn't say a word. Like a, a, some of the hardest through a calls are um, sometimes you, you know, you have someone that wants to talk a lot and interject. The best thing you can do when you set up that call, let, let, let the two people that are doing the call take over and just take notes. So, um, and so once, once that happens, the, the first thing I do is, well, what do you like about what you saw? And I, I just basically tell them, say, listen, I'm, I'm here to add value. So, you know, it's an honor to meet you. It's can, first of all, congratulations on, on what you're doing. You know, tell me a little bit more about yourself. This is a Gene Frederick, you know, straight out of the Gene Frederick playbook. Tell me more, you know, tell me more about yourself and let them tell you about their what they're trying to accomplish. And then, you know, I just know how to connect the dots. Um, and it's, you know, it's mainly, okay, so, you know, what do you like about what you saw? Well, you know, I don't really have a lot of support where I'm at, you know, these types of things. So, okay, well, you know, and then she had some questions. Well, what, how does, you know, how does the training work? How many events do y'all have? And I said, let me explain to you, uh, you know, a big difference about EXP. And this is like, if you get on 50 three-way calls with me, you're going to pick up a lot of, a lot of little things that I point to, to how I answer some of these questions. And it's not really you know, that I just know, you know, more than, you know, another person necessarily. It's just the way that, that I find the, you know, what is your, what is it you're trying to solve by going to events? Well, what's different about EXP? And I always explain the huge difference at e of EXP versus where you're at is when I was in the bricks and mortar model, like you're in your office, if I had something that was really working for me, I was not going to share that with anyone else in the office because I looked at you like competition. I said, the events we do are great. We have two, two big ones we do a year. We've got regional ones. There's a lot of that, but it's literally like this every day at EXP. Instead of you having to get on a plane, fly around the country to get in a room to and pay a lot of money, which is how I had to do it. Um, and I did that for years and it was great. And I've always learned that there's somebody out there that's done what I'm trying to do. I just need to go find those people and, and learn from them. So I, I, I definitely appreciate the question about events, but what I want you to really understand that's different about EXP is that's our environment every day. So and explaining to her the difference, the 55 hours of training, you're literally, you know, one click away from anything you want to learn anytime. And it's not just, you know, corporate vanilla training. These are the top agents in the industry that are at this company that are doing these trainings. So anything that you could possibly want to learn, you can learn at any given time, pretty much almost 24 seven. There's that much going on that you can do. So you don't actually have to go to live events to learn. And, 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 and that's probably how she felt because she was at a transaction fee company that probably doesn't provide, they don't have a lot of money in that model as a brokerage to provide a lot of training, provide a lot of technology. So all of these things she's had to figure out and she has through just like muscling through it, you know, figured out how to become successful on her own, but not really much support. And so I just wanted to make sure that, that I could connect the dots on the value in the training, why it's different, why, how this is going to really help you grow your business. It's not, you know, not just about going to the live events. It's the whole ecosystem of EXP. And so I explained that to her. She's like, that made a lot of sense. Thank you. That was very helpful. So then she had another couple of questions and I answered, answered those questions. And then, you know, I said, you know, asking her about her goal. You know, you, you want to go from 30 to 60 transactions. We're telling me, you know, you know, most agents that I talk to, and, and this is just from, you know, again, doing thousands of these calls, plus, you know, years and years and years of experience of talking to agents and knowing what the real problems is are. And I wish I, um, I'll, I'm going to see if I can find this to add to the group. I think this will be actually really helpful. In fact, I'm going to do it now. So give me a second. I'm going to share with you something I call the eight stages of the real estate business. So we created this um, as a training, you know, in a coaching company for years. We, you know, we, we talk to agents at all different levels of business, right? And let me see if I can drop this in here. So y'all snag, snag that, download it and, and digest it. There's, we're not gonna go through the whole thing. There's a lot on there, but, but essentially at every stage of the business, like I identify what stage of business they're at. And that's my mental model. Like where are they at in these eight stages in terms of their production? And I use transactions as the the kind of not just you know, volume because you could be doing you know million, two million dollar houses or hundred thousand dollar houses. But if you're doing 10 deals, you're doing 10 deals, you know, that's usually an indicator of the level of success you're having in the business. And so, you know, I knew that she was at 30. So she was at stage three. And the biggest problem at stage three that most agents have, if they're if they're getting if they get to 30 transactions, it's usually they're a really good agent. They probably have a lot of repeat and referral business. But to get to the next level, they need something that's proven and repeatable and consistent and predictable that's generating a, a couple of deals a month for them. And that is done through one of two ways and one of two ways only. 
you're not going to squeeze more referrals out of out of your database to get to 60, right? So like, you know, I love repeat and referral. It's great, but you probably noticed it's very, it's very, um, um, it's not very predictable. You don't know when someone's going to send a referral, when somebody's going to come back and do business again. And, you know, you probably experienced last year that a lot of the things that you were doing were not, people were on the fence. They weren't making a lot of moves. Uh-huh, right? So understanding the problem, her problem, she's now starting to really see that I understand her problem. And so, um, to, so for most agents, you got two choices. There's only two. You can grow your business now by prospecting or by learning how to, you know, turn advertising dollars into profit. That's the two easiest ways. There's not a lot, you can network, you can try a whole lot of other things, but like for predictability, you can either make calls or you can learn how to run ads and generate leads at a low cost. And you, she, you know, because she's doing 30 deals, she has money. So she's willing to invest in, in growing her business. And so she, I, she, I didn't get the feeling that she wanted to prospect and, you know, cold call and any of those things. I said, so what I would tell you to do, we're going to give you the technology that you need. We're going to show you how to run ads and generate leads at three to five dollars a lead. And we're gonna and we're gonna do it because of two reasons. Number one, we're not we're not, we're not gonna get real creative. It's not you know like when if, when people don't understand marketing, like they don't realize that. Well, I do a quarterly newsletter. Well, think about how many times do you need to see something before you think of someone first, right? So you mail somebody once a, every quarter, once every three months. There's no chance that person's thinking of you when the time does come for them to sell. And so you know a lot of people will try this, try that. And at this stage, usually they've, if they've been doing 30 transactions for very long, they spend a lot of money on a lot of things that didn't work. And so they're, 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 there's all these options of what things to do, but they don't really have a, a good filter for how they decide what to do next. And so um, I look at two things. If you want to double your business, which this lady was an ambitious, has an ambitious goal, which, is, which I love because those people are the easiest to help because they're the most coachable usually. Um, so you need... You need something that's consistent and predictable generating a pillar. I call it an oil well. You need to build, we need we need to build our first oil well that's going to pump oil. It could be you making calls to physicals expires. That's free leads. Anybody can do that. You just have to learn the skills. Or we can start generating, you know, a, a creative strategy around how to generate higher quality leads at a lower cost. Right. And so that would it made perfect sense for us. If, if we can do that and we can generate, I want to, I want the lowest cost highest return on investment, highest return on time and quickest time to get your money back, right? So within, if within 60 to, day, 60 to 90 days, like we could work on, uh, what was the example that I used uh, with her? I said, um, it was, I can't remember what it was, but I'll use short sales as an example, right? If short sales were a hot thing, we started working on short sales. What I learned was I could spend a thousand dollars a month and by month 12, I would have my first closing and, and get paid. So I'm working on something for that I don't get a return on that investment for 12 months, whereas I could do something that's going to get deals flow flowing faster and closing faster, and then I can you know then I can reinvest the, those dollars into something else. And so just explaining to her that strategy because no one ever had she totally understood that I understood her business and how to best help her and gave her some confidence that this is the right thing next thing for me to be doing. And once you have confidence that hey this is the right strategy. And I'm going to stick to it. Um, you know, they're going to do the training, go through, listen to the scripts. They're going to they're going to do the work because they know this is the best option. And here's the reasons why it's the best option. It's going to pay me the highest return on investment. It's going to pay me the fastest. It's the easiest to execute because you're going to help me. There's no additional cost for technology. All of these things are aligning to the offer of you can't do none of this unless you come partner with us at EXP. Right. So. So that's kind of the, the the process that I take people through is connect all the dots, answer all their questions, focus on their goal, make that my goal and, and show them and demonstrate to them in that three-way call how I'm going to actually help them get to the goal. Um, hope, I hope that was that was helpful. Um, um, did that answer your question? <laughs> all right, right on. Steve, you good? Oh, good one, Jay. Yeah, man. What's up, hey, Drew? Buddy. What up, bro? Love you, bro. Love you too, hey, man. I just wanted to give everyone, I, I always do this at the end of uh, our meeting, give them a uh, quote that I've been looking up all week. Uh, this go. one's short, short and sweet, everybody. This one says, it's from Jay Shetty. He says, comfort creates self-care, but discomfort creates self-respect. Ooh, that's good. All right, that's I'm so put, good. 
right? So comfort creates self-care. We all need it, right? But what we need even more is to put ourselves in vulnerable spots, do hard things so that when hard things come up in life, we're ready. We already know we can do them. So comfort creates self-care, but discomfort creates self-respect. It's so good. I'm, I'm uh, hey, brother, thank you so much for this, too. Yeah, man. Hey, it's it's always a pleasure to, to, to get an invite to come come and share with you guys. And so it's an honor. Awesome. Well, in four minutes, we have our sales call with Brent Gove going on, and he's got a special go, uh, guest for that. So if you guys want to stick around, I'll put the timer on in four minutes. We'll jump right back on here. Unless, Jay, you want to continue going for a few more minutes, but we have people jumping on for the sales call here. Jay, that was awesome. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate it. Steve, it looked like Steve had a question. If he if he wants to shoot yeah. that one, we can knock um, it up. Matt, Smith, Matt Stewart knows I'm going to go uber quick, right? Quick All question. Right. Oh, always so, Jay. Quick. I appreciate your time, buddy. I know you're busy, yeah, so I appreciate it. I'll go fast. I get stuck connecting the dots. Is it just time on task? I think that's where I'm getting stuck. People come to me with stuff, and then I'm trying to figure out in my head as I'm talking to them, which way do I go? It, I just get stuck. It, it very, I, so I think that that the graph that I just gave you will help give you a, it'll help give you a, a, a better understanding of where they're at, okay? So you know, that for me, when I know what I know what their problems are, I know what it feels like. All of those little things that are on this eight stages give you all the context of what like what it feels like to be where they're at, why they're stuck, what thing, what's the the X factor that'll move them to the next stage. It's all, all of those things just just help me to understand who I'm talking to, understanding my ICP, my ideal client profile, who I'm sitting in front of. If I'm speaking to a room of people, I want to know who's in the room, how many deals they're doing so I know how to talk to them. That will help you to, that'll speed up the time on task. Time on task, that'll just give you evidence. You're like, holy shit, that's exactly what their problem is. Like, you know, you'll connect with the stages. And if, if you're using that as your guide, and you'll feel a lot more confident that you understand their problem more clearly um, by using that as your guide to kind of understand where they're at and the hump they have to jump over. Um, but I think it is a little bit of time on task, but I think that eight stages will definitely help. Um, just help give you a better understanding of where they're at and what they actually have to do to get to the next stage. And then, you know, connecting the dots with how, how to help, how we're going to help them do that um, at EXP. Right. So, okay. um, and I'm happy to jump on and help you with anything. You know, I should have record, yeah, I should record all my three-way calls. I stopped recording them a while back, but, um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully that, that'll help that eight stages will help you to just identify their real problem and really try to dig. Sometimes people don't want to tell you, you know, they don't, you know, they don't, or they're not honest or they're got, they're guarded a little bit. Um, and so, you know, the more someone helps edifying that, Hey, this, you know, this person really is good at helping, you know, as long as you open up and have questions, they're going to really try to help. That's one of the things you're going to love about him. You know, like really, you know, try to try to, you know, sometimes on the front end, you can, you can help make, um, make that your job a lot easier by the way they edify you and, and all of that to, to get them to be ready with questions and willing to open up and share. And so, Hey, you're gonna love this guy. He loves helping people. That's all he's interested in. It's not a recruiting call. He just wants to help agents and, and make sure that they feel comfortable sharing, you know, sharing with you where they are oftentimes one-on-one, -on -one, they would never share those things with, with, you know, the person that's setting up the three-way call, but now they feel like, okay, here's my opportunity. Let me just tell them what I'm trying to do. And so I think that can help as well. Gotcha. I appreciate you, Jay. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Great job. We'll see you at Cabo. All right, you got it. All right. Y'all take hey, care. Have a great day. You, you got your you got social it. media back. There he is right there. The one percenter himself. <laughs>